thanks for inviting me. And um, as I said, I will give you a short uh, introduction to what is the Central Atlantic Magmatic Province and campus and acronymous. And um, this uh, province, sorry. Okay, uh, it's it's actually a large igneous province. It's a very large igneous province uh, with uh, basaltic rocks, which can be found nowadays over a total surface of about 10 million square kilometers from uh, here, for example, in Brittany, uh, throughout uh, Western Africa, or also Spain and Portugal, and down in South America, as far south as Bolivia, and along the east coast of Eastern North America from uh, Florida, more or less, to Nova Scotia and uh, Newfoundland in uh, Canada. Uh, we don't know exactly the amount of our original volume, of course, because uh, most is eroded uh, or is hidden below the surface, but we can estimate something like uh, 4 million cubic kilometers, which is comparable in size to the Siberian tribes, for example, or we can say it's about uh, maybe three or four times the Deccan tribes in India as, as total volume. There are huge lava flow fields up to a thousand uh, cubic kilometers, and they occur only limitedly in some regions, for example, in Morocco, in Portugal, uh, in the US, in Canada, and uh, Brazil and Bolivia. But what is most uh, striking about camp is the presence of very large seals, or if I can say it, uh, seal swarms, which are present, for example, in this area of, uh, of Northwestern Africa, or in the Amazonian basin of, of Brazil. And these seals are um, probably, they make up 2 million cubic kilometers, just the material, the basalt, which is intruded as seal. And um, yeah, all this was uh, emplaced, and we will see it was emplaced in a relatively short time, um, uh, uh, shortly before uh, breakup of Pangaea, uh, which happened in the early uh, in the early Jurassic. We don't know exactly when, but about 195 million years ago. Uh, in the field, uh, what we can see and sample are. Um, mainly intrusive rocks, for example, mega dikes like this one in, in Morocco, which can be followed in the field or also on Google Maps uh, for 150 kilometers, or the huge Messejana dike in Spain, and they have a big dikes like this. Uh, this one in Spain is like almost 500 kilometers long and up to 300 meters thick. And then there are also dike swarms. Uh, so we feel high uh, concentration of dikes in a small area, like for example in the east, uh, southeastern USA, Carolinas and uh, Georgia, for example, and in uh, Mali, in the Taudeni Basin, which is nowadays not accessible, unfortunately. Uh, and here the dikes are just cross-cutting in quite chaotically, and, and they are not uh, oriented in the same uh, direction any, anyhow. And then we have these huge seals, as I told you, they are intruding um, Paleozoic sediments. Uh, the very famous one is the Palisade seals in, uh, in uh, New, York, New York City. Uh, but there are seals also, for example, in Bolivia and in Morocco, and in particular, the ones I've showed you before in Brazil and in uh, Guinea and, and Sierra Leone. Uh, Mali of Western Africa. And then there's also, uh, there are two actually uh, large um, layered uh, mafic intrusions. Uh, one in um, Sierra Leone, which is the free town complex, and the, uh, one another one in Guinea. And these are uh, intrusions of magma in which occurred in the, in the more or less in the mid crust at some 10 kilometers depth or so. And finally, there are also lava flows. There are not so many lava flows, as I told you before, but there are some, and they all uh, are uh, presently preserved in uh, sedimentary basins, which are uh, Triassic in age, or which started actually forming as basins um, from the, let's say, earliest Triassic and sometimes even um, late uh, Paleozoic, late Permian. So in general, 
what uh, we can say about emplacement is that camp uh, intrusions are not uh, strictly related to the uh, formation of the Atlantic Rift and to the breakup of Pangaea. And uh, the, uh, the same can be said for the Triassic um, basins in which the lava flows are preserved and those are not necessarily uh, oriented parallel or orthogonal to the uh, Atlantic Rift, which was uh, developing at that time or which uh, formed an ocean a uh, few million years afterwards. Uh, all these basalts were erupted at um, high rates of eruption. This can be shown by geochronology, for example, when we do a high precision geochronology through uh, lava piles of, of basalt. And uh, in this case, there's uh, the ages between the lowest outcropping and the topmost outcropping lavas or datable lavas, uh, uh, they show no um, significant uh, difference in age, actually they give the same age. And so the maximum duration of the emplacement of this lava uh, piles is uh, lower than the analytical error, which is actually less than 100,000 years. It's more like 50 or 60,000 years. And then we know also through magnetostratigraphy that these lava uh, piles were erupted as pulses of very high eruption rates, uh, which are up to 100 cubic kilometers per year, which is about uh, at least uh, a thousand times present day uh, Hawaiian eruptions. And what's the age of all this? Well, uh, we have now a lot of ages and uh, the most recent and the most precise one are uh, UPB ages on zircons, which can be found occasionally in basaltic rocks. And uh, the, one of the main, well, besides the age, which is at 1.6 uh, for the onset of the volcanism, and uh, this age can be found throughout the province from, for example, uh, Bolivia, to the Messejana dike I've shown you before in Spain, uh, the lava flows in Canada, or intrusions in uh, Guinea, like this one dated here. And they have all uh, essentially the same age. And this means that throughout this whole uh, area, entire area of 10 million cubic uh, square kilometers, the uh, basalts were emplaced uh, or started in place, uh, emplacing at the same, exactly the same uh, moment. And then we compare all the ages we have. So we have about 26 uh, UPB ages by, by uh, the group I'm working with and other groups also. And there are also about 19, 90 argon argon ages and some are of very uh, good quality, almost comparable to uh, UPB. And all these ages together give an um, indication that camp uh, magmatism and volcanism uh, had a clear peak activity at between 201.6 and 201.1 million years. So this is, by the way, uh, coinciding with the end Triassic uh, extinction and, and camp uh, probably caused it. And this is preceding the breakup of Pangaea and the formation of the first oceanic crust by probably uh, maybe six, seven or, or so million years. It's not very precisely known how, when the first oceanic crust was actually uh, formed. What do we know from geochemistry? Well, the first point is that all the camp rocks are uh, basaltic rocks. Uh, there are no alkaline rocks like in the uh, Western uh, European Rift or the East African Rift. Um, so they are all uh, tholeites, meaning that they were produced by relatively high uh, melting degrees, by relatively uh, hot, uh, hot mantle. <laughs> Um, from a chemical point of view, most of the basalts have an enriched uh, composition in terms of isotopes and of trace elements, which means that they don't come from a mantle similar to, for example, the mid ocean rich uh, basalt uh, mantle, so from a normal uh, sh shallow upper mantle, but they need to have an, an enriched component, which we uh, think is mainly due to recycling of uh, subducted components, which were um, brought into the mantle during the Hercinian or, or, or earlier subduction events, which are um, 
brought to the to the formation actually of Pangea, or to the, which we are um, preceding the formation of Pangea. And the only exceptions where we have less enriched or little than enriched composition uh, are coming from uh, Carolinas, so from the southeast uh, US, and from uh, from Morocco, some from Morocco, and these have. They are shown by this in this chemical diagram here, for example, and they have isotopic compositions also, which are uh, partially overlapping uh, mid ocean rich basalts or oceanic island basalts. We and have this, 10 minutes now. Okay. So these basalts from uh, Morocco, actually, they are late. Uh, they both date uh, the early in place ones, which have the rich composition, late. Uh, magmas have a more more like composition in Morocco, and then the uh, depleted or not so enriched basalts they come from uh, Carolinas, and uh, they are well placed in this area here. So the, this means that in this area here, the mantle which was melting during placement of these dikes, and in Morocco during placement of these late lava flows was probably a relatively shallow uh, asthenospheric mantle, which uh, indicates that, that in this area, in the Carolinas, the mantle was already quite, uh, the lithospheric mantle was already quite thin and the asthenosphere was already at relatively high depth, maybe 60 kilometers or so when the dikes were in place. And in Morocco, this, there was a shallowing of the, or erosion of the, uh, or, or thinning of the uh, lithospheric mantle and uh, rise of the asthenosphere uh, only late during placement of this late magmatic rocks. But most of the camp basalts have this enriched component and this enriched component, as I showed you, as I told you before, is probably recycled subduction related um, material, crustal material, essentially. Uh, for the most part of these enriched uh, lavas or, or basalts, and it can be a mantle plume uh, material in the case of uh, the what we call the high titanium uh, basaltic group, which is occurring in, in Brazil and uh, Northwestern Africa. We can uh, estimate the depth of melting on, of all these lava flows and, and basalts. And uh, what turns out is, is that the most likely depth of melting is uh, ranging between 80 and 110 kilometers depth. So it's not very shallow, uh, but it's not also, it's not very, very deep. And um, so what uh, another uh, important aspect to look at, in particular in uh, Africa and in South America, is that we, when we see the composite, the emplacement uh, locations of camp and we compare it to the um, thickness of the cratons uh, in these areas for example here we are in south america and all these purple colors indicate a thick uh, cratonic uh, keel uh, we see that camp uh, basalts actually were emplaced or intruded in this case most are dikes or stills they were emplaced just at the edges of the deep uh, cratonic areas. So this suggests that there's a, a control of the lithospheric structure of the lithospheric, uh, of the, uh, lithospheric keel of the cratons, which uh, controls the emplacement of this um, most of camp uh, magmatic rocks. And to sum up, and uh, we can say that uh, all the camp rocks, which are not directly related to the camp to the Atlantic rifting, like the ones in Carolina or in Morocco, I've showed you before, those are uh, this, this main shift, the main uh, uh, group of camp basalts. They are the emplacement is controlled by the structure of the lithosphere uh, and of the cratonic lithosphere. This is a, a schematic. A cartoon of it with the uh, cratonic lithosphere going down to some 200-250 kilometers depth and the uh, magmas uh, emplacing at the uh, edges of this of this cratonic kills and in particular the high titanium uh, basalts I've, to uh, I've showed you before they may carry a uh, uh, um, mantle plume signal and they were emplaced between thick cratonic keels of 
South America and uh, Northwestern Africa. So in conclusion, well, CAMP is obviously a sin extension of magmatic province. Everything was in place in, in basins, okay? No, no, no problem. But um, CAMP is not directly related to uh, emplacement of the formation of the Atlantic Rift, or to say it better, uh, formation of the CAMP is not controlled only by the Atlantic Rift system. This is, uh, I've shown you before, uh, evident for the most part of the CAMP, except maybe for the dikes in the Carolinas and for the late uh, basalts from Morocco and from some from uh, the uh, US. Most of the CAMP was in place uh, within the continents, far away from the Atlantic Rift, which formed later on, and the emplacement is probably uh, controlled by the structures of cratonic keys, which uh, somehow guide the uh, rise of the mantle and uh, the uh, zones where the mantle can actually melt and form, uh, form uh, magmas by the compression melting, and uh, which then uh, intrude and, and um, erupt close to this cratonic keys. And then finally, yeah, camp obviously preceded the uh, formation of the Atlantic crust by maybe five to 10 uh, million years. Okay, uh, I'm done. Thanks Thank a lot, you. Andrea. Thanks a lot. There's time for uh, one or two quick questions. If you have one, raise your hand or type it in the chat. Gianrito. Generator, is that a question? Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, thank you for this uh, presentation. So um, um, I'm a little bit confused about this relation between camp and, pre and the opening of the Central Atlantic. Uh, yes. Is it possible that uh, it's not uh, that camp is actually the result of this rifting, but that it is actually controlling the onset of rifting and break up so yes. those, uh, what yeah. controls what yeah um i don't know uh i mean let's let's go to a map for example okay um i think there's a, a mutual uh, play between magmatism and structures which were already present because for example, there's all this huge uh, amount of camp in, in South America, which didn't lead to any uh, actual uh, breakup. You know? And the breakup was only in this area here, and maybe later in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. Okay? And probably the breakup started from here, where we have this Carolina dikes with shoal, this shallow melting zone, okay? and it moves upwards. Okay? Um, also, I have to say that, um, there were already rift basins present before camp, obviously. Uh, those are present in Morocco, for example, in, in Spain, Portugal, uh, all along the east coast of North America. And these basins, they were uh, act, acting as basins, so they were uh, showing extension going on from at least the Carnian or or maybe earlier, so at least 30 million years before actual breakup. So sure, a camp facilitated probably the breakup, uh, I think, but the breakup happened here because these were already uh, areas which were already uh, sort of um, ready to, to break up, okay? Uh, I would say, and and like here in the south, that nothing happened. That they mean there are basins, there are Paleozoic basins, there are small Triassic basins, but there's no real breakup in in South America, and there's no real breakup, for example, here, of course, in between the cratons in uh, in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. Thank um, you, Lian. Next question, please. Hi, everyone. Um, this is a great talk, Andrea. I've really uh, enjoyed and learned so much from your work. Thank you Thank over you. the years. Um, I'm wondering about uh, your ideas about all camp uh, magmatism predating breakup uh, with Jack et al. over a few different publications over the past few years have shown that breakup in the Eastern North American area is is 
uh, diachronous and actually began in the Southeast. Yeah, yes. Before yes. camp magnetism. So yes. I think that fits, you know, well with your model, but I think that's an important distinction. Yeah, but uh, is it already a breakup leading to formation of an oceanic crust? Uh, yeah, we that's, don't really their in, that's their interpretation, yes. But we don't have a sample of an oceanic crust, for example, and <laughs> uh, uh, which is showing a, a, a Triassic age. But uh, it's possible, yeah, it's possible. It's uh, definitely. Also, I've seen, I've shown this a small ocean in my cartoon here. I mean, uh, sure, it's possible that the breakup already started. Uh, some. What is sure, this breakup was stronger here in the south, and then moved. Uh, northwards, and and the oceanic crust here in the north is probably some something like Cinemurian, so maybe one ninety ninety five million years or so. Yes, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Phil. Uh, I mean, uh, thanks, thanks for your question. Yeah, a bit running out of time, but there are still some questions, and uh, there's no no uh, no way that you can answer them uh, in the chat if we close the session. So we just keep on going. Chen, do you okay. have a question? Thank you. Chen, do you want to ask the question yourself? Uh, okay. I, uh, thanks for the interesting talk. Uh, I just wonder how the lospheric thickness could have changed um, si since the C CMP volcanism at about 200 million years ago. How the lithospheric thickness changed since, since 200 million years ago? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, because you you compared the uh, the loss of thickness map just at the present day time. Um, I wonder yes. maybe yes. yeah, there's some change. Yes, sure, sure, sure. Um, of course, it can have changed. Uh, but what changes actually lithospheric thicknesses? Um, for example, uh, erosion by a mantle plume, for example, no? or uh, which is uh, obviously related to some magmatism. So if I think that if the thickness is changed, particularly inside the cratons, inside the continents, okay, if they change, they change mainly during camp uh, magmatism. Uh, so during uh, at the same time, 200 million years ago, okay. Uh, I don't, there's no magmatism uh, younger than camp, almost no magmatism younger than camp in this area, are the same in Africa. So I don't think that the cratons were severely eroded after 200 million years, but of course, I don't know. Uh, there are some indications about um, kimberlites, for example, or, or, or intracontinental lamproids, and those are, sorry, those are mainly still mainly located in the um, uh, in the areas which are now presently still uh, cratonic or close to the cratonic hills. So there are no kimberlites being here, for example. Okay, the kimberlites they are all uh, on the cratons or very close to the cratons, and this indicates also that uh, I mean post post camp kimberlites, okay, so Cretaceous ones, for example. And th this indicates that the cratons were um, still similar to the uh, present day in the Cretaceous. And I think they were still quite similar to the present day uh, when camp magmatism uh, finished 200 million years ago. Okay, but thank I, you. I'm not a geophysicist, so I don't really know. Thank you anyway. Before we wrap up, I also have a quick question. In in classical textbooks, plumes always have tails. Where's the tail of camp? There's no tail. That's a good point. I mean, uh, it's, there's a big debate if, if there's a plume component in camp. And I can tell you that from my point of view as a geochemist, uh, I, I, we don't see it. There's no evidence of a plume component in camp. Um, but we, this doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. I mean, we don't see it. Uh, there's no tail, yeah, correct. There's no uplift, for example, like uh, seen in other large English provinces. Um, 
many people don't believe there's a plume involved in camp. Um, I think there must be some excess heat coming from from somewhere uh, at depth. Um, and I still think that the plume is the most simple way to explain it. Um, like, for example, in this model, uh, we, it's a very simple model, of course, but in order to produce magmatism and to produce this magmatism all over the province at the same time, you, you need to heat up the mantle. Even if, if it's the shallow mantle, which is melting, uh, you need to heat it up uh, at a simultaneously over 10 million squ uh, square kilometers. Uh, and that needs an ex external source of heat, I think. And uh, I think that must be a plume-related uh, source of heat. But uh, I agree, there's no tail of uh, plume. There is no chain of islands going into the Atlantic Ocean, which have a composition or uh, an age which is compatible uh, with a, like reunion type um, uh, plume uh, tail in the, uh, in, the, in the Atlantic Ocean.